Stephon Gilmore has established himself as one of the best defensive players in the NFL, and his recent Defensive Player of the Year honors certainly helps that argument. Gilmore has been a standout corner with the Patriots and was stellar for the Bills for five seasons prior. He is entering his eighth year in the pros and is likely to continue dominating for years to come. Today, we are going to look back at the 2012 NFL Draft, a draft that featured a lot of disappointing top picks and discuss those who were taken before the future defense of player of the year. This is who was drafted before Stefan Gilmore. Before we take a look at those taken before Gilmore, we need to take a look back at his rise to NFL superstardom. Stephon Styles Gilmore was born on September 19, 1990 in Rock Hill, South Carolina. Gilmore attended South Point High School where he played football, basketball, and ran track. He played quarterback and defensive back for the Stallions. During his senior year, South Point, a team that included future 2014 first overall pick Jadavion Clowney, went 15-0 and won the SCHSL quadruple Drupal A Division II title. On offense, Gilmore passed for 1,771 yards and 14 touchdowns, and added 1,331 yards and 23 touchdowns on the ground. He was named South Carolina Mr. Football. Gilmore was the second best prospect from South Carolina in the class. He had offers from major universities, such as Alabama, Tennessee, and Clemson, but opted to go to his hometown, South Carolina. Gilmore graduated early from high school in December of 2008, and order to participate in spring practice, and it paid off the years. In addition to his stellar play on defense, Gilmore had the rare appearance on offense. He had 37 receiving yards and 68 passing yards in his college career. After a successful three years with the Gamecocks, Gilmore decided to make the jump to the NFL. Gilmore was invited to the Combine, where among defensive backs, he finished second in the short shuttle and fourth in the 40-yard dash and the three-cone drill. At the 2012 NFL Draft, he didn't wait long to hear his name called, when the Buffalo Bills took him with the 10th selection, making him the second cornerback off the board. Gilmore had an impressive progression over his time in Buffalo. During his first four years, he recorded 178 tackles and 9 interceptions. In 2016, Gilmore saw a major jump in production, with 48 tackles and an impressive five interceptions. He was named to his first Pro Bowl right before entering free agency. Very good timing. He signed a nice five-year, $65 million deal in free agency with the Patriots. Gilmore was good in Buffalo, but in a top market like New England that everybody has their eyes on, he was destined to get more attention in New England. In his first year in New England, Gilmore had 50 tackles and two interceptions. The following season, he made a huge impact and began to put his name in the discussion as the best defensive player in football. Gilmore was named a first-team All-Pro for the first time in his career and made the Pro Bowl behind 45 tackles and two interceptions. Additionally, he won his first ring and played a big role in the Patriots' Super Bowl win, picking off Jared Goff to seal the deal. He improved on his 2018 campaign in a big way this past year, with 53 tackles and a career-high six interceptions. Here's an even more ridiculous stat on the year. He returned two of those interceptions back to the house and allowed only one touchdown on the year. He scored more touchdowns than he gave up in 2019. Gilmore was named Defensive Player of the Year. He is one of the best defensive players in football, comparable to the Aaron Donalds and JJ Watts of the world, and that's not easy to find. Now, let's take a look into those that were taken before Gilmore. With the first overall pick in the 2012 NFL Draft, the Indianapolis Colts selected Stanford quarterback Andrew Luck. Luck left the Cardinal as the back-to-back Pac-12 Offensive Player of the Year, and one of the best quarterback prospects we'd seen since Peyton Manning, and Luck was worth the hype in the NFL. Luck started day one in Indy and showed extreme talent from the jump. The Colts went 11-5 in his first three years as Luck played in every single game. During the 2014 campaign, he led the NFL with 40 touchdowns. Luck's luck began to shift in the 2015 season though. On the year, he suffered a shoulder injury, a lacerated kidney, and a torn abdominal muscle. He missed nine games but came back ready for the 2016 season, but looking back, it might not have been a good idea. Luck missed only a game due to concussion on the year, but dealt with a lingering shoulder issue. After the season, he underwent shoulder surgery that caused him to miss the entire year. There were a lot of questions about Luck in 2018, but he answered in a 4,593 yard, 39 touchdown, and 15 interception season. He was named Comeback Player of the Year, and man, it felt like Andrew Luck was back. In the 2019 offseason, Luck suffered an ankle injury and he began to rehab. And well, that was the final straw. 
in the most shocking retirement of my lifetime, Luck decided to call it quits. Luck is one of the best athletes to end their career in its prime, which leaves the incredible question of what if? Second overall, the Washington Redskins took Baylor quarterback Robert Griffin III. RG3 had a stellar redshirt junior season for the Bears, winning the Heisman Trophy before declaring for the draft. As a 20-year-old Redskins fan who has seen a single playoff win, I can assure you that that 2012 RG3 rookie season is the most exciting football I've seen in my life. Washington struggled early on, entering their Week 10 bye at 3-6. Things looked down, but that was soon to change. RG3 went on a tangent and the Redskins went on to win 7 straight, good enough to win the NFC East and clinch a playoff spot. RG3 was named Offensive Rookie of the Year and made the Pro Bowl. The future was bright, but it all came crumbling down. From there, well... It was all disappointment, and we haven't seen that same RG3. He dealt with injuries on and off, and was benched for the entirety of the 2015 season, his final season in Washington. After his rookie year, he went 5-15 and as a starter in Washington. He played for the Browns in 2016, going 1-4, and, and that one win was the Browns' only victory over a two-year span. RG3 signed with the Ravens in 2018 to mentor Lamar Jackson, and well, it's actually safe to say that it's worked out. He's even won a start in the process. The Cleveland Browns selected Alabama running back Trent Richardson with the third pick. Richardson helped the Crimson Tide win two national championships and was a first-team All-SEC selection twice, but in the pros, he is known as one of the biggest draft busts in recent memory. Richardson did have a successful rookie campaign, rushing for 950 yards and 11 touchdowns. He was even ranked 71st on the NFL Top 100 list. Total numbers can be deceiving though. Richardson had 267 carries on the season, good for 3.6 yards per attempt, the lowest among all rookie running backs. He played in two games in 2013 for the Browns before being traded to the Colts for a first round pick. Richardson struggled in Indy with a poor 3.1 yards per attempt and was waived after the 2014 season. Richardson never played another game in the NFL. He went on to have a short stint with the Raiders, Ravens, Saskatchewan Rough Riders of the CFL, and he even played with the Birmingham Iron of the AAF. USC offensive tackle Matt Khalil was taken fourth by the Minnesota Vikings. Khalil was born into football. His father, Frank, was drafted by the Bills in 1982, and his brother, Ryan, is a three-time All-Pro. Matt Khalil was named first-team All-Pac-12 during his junior year with the Trojans. He started his time in the NFL with a bang, making the Pro Bowl as a rookie, but unfortunately for Khalil, that was the peak of recognition for his career thus far. He was a four-year staple on the offensive line for the Vikings, but suffered an injury that caused him to miss most of 20. 16. He then signed a nice five-year, $55 million deal with the Panthers, but only spent two years in Carolina before being released after an injured 2018 campaign. Khalil most recently spent the 2019 offseason with the Texans, but did not make the final roster. With the fifth overall pick, the Jacksonville Jaguars selected Oklahoma State wide receiver Justin Blackman. Trent Richardson is widely considered the biggest bust in this draft, but man, Blackman is close. He was a two-time first-team All-Big 12 selection for the Cowboys. Before Blackman even stepped on the field for the Jaguars, he was arrested for a DUI. He had a good rookie season in the NFL, leading all rookies with 865 yards and adding five touchdowns. Things looked up for Blackman, but four games in the 2013 season, he was arrested for marijuana possession and checked into a program. He was denied reinstatement ahead of the 2015 season and was arrested later in the year and sentenced to a year in jail. He technically remains on the Jaguars team reserve list. Sixth overall, the Dallas Cowboys took LSU cornerback Morris Claiborne. Claiborne wasn't considered a first round talent before his junior season with the Tigers, but broke out and established himself as a top prospect and won SEC Defensive Player of the Year. Jerry Jones and the Cowboys were extremely high on Claiborne and traded up from pick four to get him. Looking back, not worth it. Claiborne missed 26 games over his final three years in Dallas, finishing his disappointing tenure with 151 tackles and four interceptions. Claiborne has spent the next three years on one-year deals, playing with the Jets for two seasons and playing in eight games for the Chiefs last season. Of course, he did secure a Super Bowl ring. He is currently a free agent. The Tampa Bay Buccaneers selected Alabama safety Mark Barron with the seventh pick. Barron was a force for the Crimson Tide and was a first-team All-SEC selection three times. He started at strong safety for Tampa Bay during his first two years in the league, earning PFWA All-Rookie Team honors along the way. The Buccaneers brought in new head coach Lovey Smith prior to the 2014 season, leading to Barron being shipped off to the Rams for picks during the year. He was reportedly traded due to unprofessional behavior. 
Barron was mainly a backup for the Rams after being traded, but he found a new role in 2015 when he took over at weak side linebacker. He has found some success over five years with the Rams, recording 380 tackles, seven sacks, and five interceptions. He spent 2019 with the Steelers and was released this offseason, making Barron a current free agent. Texas A&M quarterback Ryan Tannehill was taken eighth by the Miami Dolphins. Tannehill spent five years with the Aggies, but played mainly wide receiver and didn't start a full season at quarterback until his redshirt senior year, where he had an impressive 3,744 yards, 29 touchdowns, and 15 interceptions to gain national attention. Tannehill was said to be the savior for the Dolphins, but it just didn't work out that way. He played in every game over his first four years in Miami, but with a lack of talent around, he wasn't able to put a winning season together. In his fifth season, though, Miami broke out and made the playoffs, despite Tannehill missing three games due to injury. Finally, he had answered the call, but in the 2017 offseason, filled with hope from Dolphins fans, Tannehill suffered a torn ACL and missed the entire year. He returned in 2018, but struggled. Tannehill dealt with a shoulder injury that caused him to miss five games on an unproductive 1,979 yards, 17 touchdowns, and nine interceptions. Tannehill was traded to the Titans ahead of 2019, given another chance to try and revive his career behind starter Marcus Mariota. After Mariota struggled to start the year, Tannehill got a shot and finally broke out. He led the Titans to a 7-3 record and threw for 2,742 yards and 22 touchdowns to only six interceptions along the way. The success continued in the playoffs as Tennessee rolled through the Patriots and Ravens before bowing out to the eventual Super Bowl winning Chiefs in the AFC Championship. Tannehill was named Comeback Player of the Year and just signed a four-year $118 million extension. With the ninth overall pick, the Carolina Panthers selected Boston College linebacker Luke Keekley. Keekley was a three-year standout for the Eagles, making first-team All-SEC every year and winning ACC Defensive Player of the Year as a junior. He only spent eight years on the field for the Panthers, but those were an eventful eight years, enough to say that he will certainly go down as a Hall of Famer. Keekley won Defensive Rookie of the Year as a rookie in the NFL, and the future was bright blinding, actually. He followed it up with a stellar season where he was named the youngest defensive player of the year in NFL history. Keekley wasn't named All-Pro or to the Pro Bowl in his impressive rookie campaign, but he went on to make it every year for the rest of his career. He never got a ring, but he played in Super Bowl 50, a loss to the Broncos. He was recently named a member of the NFL's 2010s All-Decade team. Keekley retired after 2019, a lot in part to suffering three concussions in three years, but he still remains with the Carolina organization as a pro scout. And that brings us to the 10th pick, where Stephon Gilmore came off the board to the Buffalo Bills. Gilmore has now etched himself in NFL history, winning Defensive Player of the Year, along with being named a first-team All-Pro twice and making three Pro Bowls. There is no doubt that Gilmore has groomed into an NFL superstar. The Bills made the right pick, even though they didn't get anything in return for Gilmore. But he has flourished in New England and has plenty of good years left in the league. This is Ben, who was drafted before Stephon Gilmore.